Working on tapping out these uh, broken off screws on the fenders. These are nice, big, hard. It's a hard metal. If you get a good hole going down the middle, you can drill the screw out. And uh, it's real easy. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in the vise, step one. And I'm going to take my Dremel tool and I'm going to smooth that screw off there. And stick it up. Okay, I hope I didn't get my shoulder in the way. Now you can see the round, I mean the perfectly round edge of that screw. And I'm going to put my punch like right in the middle of it. Put two little punches. Yeah, just like that. And what that does is it makes a little indentation right there so that your screw will go down. Now we're going to move over to the drill press. Okay, I'm over at the drill press. I got my little uh, place I marked there lined up with the drill bit. And then I'm simply going to drill that up. Tap, which I normally do on the bench, but I'll do this one over here so you can see it. I take my tap and I try to find where the old threads were if possible. And then I go ahead and tap the screws on out like so. I'll probably cut some of this in the yeah, it gets, uh, top of it's kind of beveled out to get the hole started, but when you get down the meat of it, it's uh, a little tougher to turn. And partially in the back there, you're just cleaning out the threads from the old rusty screw that was in there. But if you do all that and you get it right down in the same hole, which in these blocks are easy because this block I think was steel off a tank or something. They had a surplus over there. These blocks are hard as, hard as hell. And then you get a screw and you make sure your screw goes into your block right. And that one goes in just perfect. So uh, that's how you fix those. Uh, by the way, when you bend the tabs back, if they got something like this in there, you know, you can drill them out in the frame sometimes, but boy, it's a lot easier if you take these blocks out and can use them on the, uh, you know, big heavy tools that you got outside. It's hard to get to them sometimes where they're at in trunks and stuff. But I broke several off on the car and that's just an example of drilling one out. Okay, you might have been wondering as I tapped those little squares out there where they went. They go right in there. You drop them in that slot and you see they're encapsulated there. And uh, you can bend that out with a screwdriver and then you simply take a pair of pliers and bend it back down. That's a lot easier away on those encapsulated nuts if you uh, can get to them. And I'm going to take a pair of uh, pliers such as this and bend that back down there. Just to show you how I did it, I went ahead and smashed all those down and put all those back in there. There's a lot of dust and stuff on them. that. It looks rusty in this picture, but that's just dust on that. 
I'm gonna have to get something to clean that off, or maybe that's a reflection better from that side. Anyway, uh, I put those in and took those pliers and pulled them back in. I did put a screw in from the far side to hold them and make sure I got them all lined up where the holes went. So uh, that's how you put those back in and tap. Put the fender on here and I'm going to review it how I did it with you. First of all, right behind the top here, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see there's bolts here and here. I got these started because these are kind of starters on the frame before I put these on, going on up the fender. But I got these two started, and I got the one started that's right here. I'm going to zoom in on that. There's the one in there. These are all Newton U's. That's a 7 16 head. Uh, these up here are all half inch heads, and you'll notice they got big thick washers on all these uh, body parts. So anyway, I got all of those started. And then if you look in the fender here, you can see in there, there's these bolts that come down here and they go into the fender on the back side. And on the inside here, you can see there's four bolts right here, here, and you can't see the top one. But anyway, I left those all loosey-goosey. I left all these loosey-goosey. Okay, there's actually one bolt that goes in back in the bottom there. And uh, I'm going to climb underneath here in a second, but I'm going to go on around to the front and uh, show you the inside a little better. You can see all the bolts coming across the top there. This guy has a half inch head on the top and a 7 16 on the bottom, and that holds your air cleaner. Comes on across here. And uh, this, for whatever reasons, was a 7 16 inch uh, head. I think that was retapped out. But you'll also notice they come down through here. Now, these bolts that hold the frame to the wing, you have to loosen those. I had those tight, but you had to loosen those. And uh, there is a bolt right back here in the back that holds the wing right in there. And uh, there's some on the inside I'll show you, but uh, you got to leave them all loosey-goosey until you get it in. Okay, I'm back in under the fender. You'll see all these that go on the wing. They have to be loose, and you can use something in one of these holes. But you got to put this plate on also, the side plate. And... Uh, I leave them all loosey-goosey, but I leave a couple of these bottom ones out because you can put a rod in there and get it centered and pry it around a little bit. Uh, anyway, going on in here, down here you got two rods. I've got them laying on the floor, but the rod runs up to the fender here. And it's got a 7 16 inch Newton U and a, a nut on the back. This is the same way down here. You'll notice they're big old washers, and then they get bolted over there. So those hold that on, and I'm gonna swing around here now. And as you look at the pipe coming up, I have not attached that, but that gets attached up at the top there, and it gets a bolt in it, but I haven't figured out what bolt it gets yet. And then I'm gonna turn the light around and go on full. Okay, moving into the front of the fender here, you can see I got my wires. I don't have them through the holes yet in the side of the wing, but uh, I've got the brace across the front, and it's got a right angle there, and of course that goes forward to help fit the wheel in. You got that, and then you got this outside flange, and it gets held on with the 7 16 inch bolts. Oops, there goes my light. And the other thing you got is this funny bracket for this uh, air vent, and there's screws, bolts back there. And uh, anyway, that has to be loosey-goosey, and those all have to be started. And so I got all of those started, and uh, I'm going to move on to the front. Okay, going on to the front here, I'm going to go underneath. You can see I'm at the front. I'm going to show you how to prep this and put all these in when I uh, 
the grill there that pops in, but I'm going to prep the other fender and I'll show you how I do that before I put the thing in. But if you go up underneath here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but there's bolts holding this flange on here. Several of them, there's some right in there. But anyway, that goes across. Okay, I'm at the front of the car. And I'll show you how I prep this on the left fender, but this is the right fender, or left fender. I'll prep the right fender and show you how I put this stuff in. I leave this grill out to the end. It just pops in real easily. I put these on last. There's uh, bolts that go up from the bottom, and there's one right over there that goes right by the one that uh, holds the rod. And uh, that holds that plate on. I put that on after I got the fender cinched up. And I went ahead and put those on, but I'm going to talk about those later. Those hold the bumper. Now the first thing I uh, did before I tightened everything down is I got this crack right there exactly where I wanted it. The top was square and those bolts were in good. So I got that done. And so uh, I went ahead and went inside, and the first thing I tightened was there is a bracket, and you can see that bracket right there. Okay, it's at the back there, and I tightened that down so that I... Uh, would hold that in place where it goes and there's also one bolt that holds the bottom you can see it right there so I tighten those two and then I went up to the top after I got that exactly where I wanted it I went up to the top and uh, you can put a pry bar right in here and pry it up a little bit but I pried it up and got this edge and it's kind of V'd down but I got the back edge of it up where it wanted to go and this actually pulls it up that way and I tighten that up and then the next two up then since the wing was all loose on the inside I went ahead and took a, a long probe and put it in one of these uh, and I was able to center the holes and move with a little bit of effort I was able to move this around and that is that black inside wing and I also used that hole down we talked about those holes that the plate was in that I left the bolts out of and I used that to line that up and then coming down the fender there's kind of a dip right here a natural dip but anyway I made sure I was level all along that being the top of the fender and the uh, black wing and then I started tightening the bolts down from the back to the front to pull it in and there is a little swoop in it so it had to pull some of that black in and then I proceeded to tighten the rest of the bolts all the way around so, uh, you know, I basically tightened them all the way around and then I came back and I tightened the ones that were on the inside here and the inside there. And so uh, that pulled everything in and uh, got my wing on. I'm going up under the fender here. I finished putting that strap in we talked about. It gets a three quarter inch on this end. And the back end, I'm going to go in there so you can see it, hopefully. But that gets like a 3BA. It's smaller than a 7 16th inch knot. So anyway, that's got a uh, threaded stud on it so you can go in it. The other thing is I put my wires in and ran them through the holes. You can't really see them, but I ran them through the holes up there. And I'm going to go to the other side here, up on top. And you can see I brought them through here. And I got a nice wire bundle there. Now for the ground, there's triple connectors. And they use triple connectors. The Cloud 2 uses a lot of singles. But I'll show you a triple connector. 
Yeah, this is a triple here. And you can see the end of it. They're insulated going through, so every one of those are independent. And that cleans the wiring up. The Cloud 2s have, and Cloud 1s have a lot of these singles on there, so every wire goes into each single one. But this kind of cleans up the wiring. And they make a gray one that you use for ground, and they're all connected. And I can't find one laying here, but uh, anyway, it's a gray color on the inside. It doesn't have rubber separating them. It's just one piece of metal, so... Uh, I use that for the ground, which cleans up things if you look at your wiring diagram.